So Steve, last time I was here, this vineyard looked so different. There was clumps of grapes everywhere and it was just very lush. And now they really look like they've gone to sleep. Yeah, well they have. I mean, they go through a dormancy stage, all, all sort of grapevines there, like any other sort of deciduous plant, whether mm. it be an oak tree or whatever, they lose their leaves for, for winter mm. and then all the new growth comes. But in the case of a grapevine, we've, um, we've got to prune it during this thing. So, so sort of not only is it asleep, but all of our hard work starts and it's cold and wet. Yes. Maybe not so much today, but it's cold and wet out here to prune the vines and shape them for the following year. Mm. These are the canes that we put down last year mm -hmm. and they've grown um, sort of shoots off them. Mm. And uh, we're now taking this one off and we're leaving some, some of the replacement canes mm. to wrap down onto this wire here so that they can then grow shoots up. Okay. So it'll end up being sort of quite a neat um, sort of grapevine with with one cane going to about here yep. and the other cane going to about here yep. and then off those two canes all of these shoots and, and bunches will grow yep. and, um, and in another 12 months it'll, or in another four months or five months it'll look like just a wall of leaves um, with yet yeah, nicely sort of dappled light on fruit. We've just bought a machine which um, which does, we've got to do the manual cuts, yep. but it'll take all of this old wood up above the canopy and it'll shred it. Amazing. And it'll just leave these couple of, of um, canes that we've, we haven't cut down the bottom here. And it doesn't and damage the vine at all. No, and we'll be able to, to wrap those down and, uh, and it, it's probably saved us, you know, somewhere between 35 and 40 cents a vine. It's amazing. And yep. were you doing it manually before? We are doing it manually. And so Gosh. on a scale like this, where there's, you know, there's nearly 500 acres of grapes yeah. and there's, um, there's, you know, a thousand vines per acre, it's, um, you're probably better at the math than me, but well, it's a um, lot of money. Well, I'm math expert, of course, but um, off the top of my head, a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> and what sort of grapes are we growing here? Uh, well, this is Chardonnay. Um, we, we've got some Pinot in our glass, but, yeah. uh, but this particular block is Chardonnay, and this actually goes into our estate. Okay. Um, sort of Chardonnay that we were drinking earlier. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, I'm liking them already. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing your work, Vines. Now, this is another one of my favourites and probably my favourite red too. Um, tell me a little about this one. Okay, well this is um, our state Pinot Noir and mm -hmm. again we, we do a reserve single vineyard Pinot Noir or a couple of those. And uh, this we is the do estate? the estate, yeah. Yep. And this is from uh, three particular vineyards and um, it's a really special um, you know, quite quite old vines. They'd be 25 years of age now. Mm. Um, you know, the average age of these three vineyards. So they've got a bit of age on them. They've mm. got nice intensity and lovely aromatics and oh, beautiful. And um, it, it it's one of the things I love about Pinot Noir. It's it's very perfumed and very aromatic. It's mm. it's quite powerful still. Mm. Um, I, I think find... you should make a Pinot Noir perfume. <laughs> there you exactly. go. <laughs> Debortly perfume. Sure. branch into it. Um, you know last time we were here you were explaining to me about other parcels of wine coming from other wineries in yes. the area. Yeah. What's that then? Okay. That's not a state, obviously. No, well, sometimes we'll, we'll buy fruit from other vineyards in mm. the valley, and it depends. We work very closely with a group of farmers, mm. and uh, we'll bring their fruit in, and that'll go into some things like um, like uh, sort of Gulf Station wines, yeah, right. um, where they're Yarra Valley still, but they, but they don't necessarily have to come from this particular property, okay. because there's a lot of very, very good fruit grown. And uh, and I might as well take advantage of it for some of the some of the more commercial lines. Yeah, right. And um, so it's a, so you don't need to do it. You just do it to break things up and to sort of. Yeah, and we don't quite have enough grapes yeah. planted ourselves. We've got a lot of grapes planted, yeah. but it's never quite enough. Which is your favourite red out of all your reds? Oh, I think Pinot Noir. For this sure. one, the estate yes. or the single? Uh, look, my preference is estate. I think. Um, I love this particular wine. I think in terms of value for money, it's terrific. I think mm. it sells for about $35. Yeah. It's, um, it's just really good aromatic Pinot Noir. It really is quite typical of this site. Mm. And I think that's, you know, that's very important in wine. It, mm. it must sort of taste like it comes from here. And I think whenever I taste this, it, it does remind me of Dixon's Creek. Yeah, it's, well, it reminds me of here as well. I love it. <laughs> it's beautiful.